Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is second lecture of FFT. Yeah, so introduction to FFT part two. So let's see what we are going to learn in this lecture. So first of all, let's see what topics we are going to cover in this lecture. We'll start with evaluating the coefficient and value form. In the last lecture, we have learned there are two different ways you can represent a polynomial in memory. Uh, either using coefficient form or value form. We'll learn how you can uh, how you can evaluate both of these forms and also we'll see how these two fit into FFT. All right. We have been learning about these two for like two lectures. So of course, these two are important for FFT, right? So once we evaluate that, the whole process you will learn that uh, what are the pros and cons of each of these uh, different uh, forms of polynomial. All right. Third, We'll get the high level idea, high level, uh, high level structure of FFT, how it actually works and where these two forms actually fit into FFT implementation. Okay. And finally, we'll get, uh, we'll, I'll give you an introduction to DFT, that is discrete Fourier transform. That is very important part of FFT. Right. So let's get started. So let's start with the multiplication of two polynomials. Let's learn how we used to do this in school, right? We have done that, right? So let's say we have two polynomials. P1 is 7 plus 2x, P2, 4 minus 3x, right? So how do you multiply polynomial? The simple way is that take the first, first term from the first polynomial, multiply it with the whole second polynomial. So 7 times 4 minus 3x. Then take the second term, that is 2x, multiply with the whole polynomial, right? This is what, this is how you, we used to do in the, uh, in the school, right? So if you do the maths, multiply and addition, you will get this 28 minus uh, 21x plus 8x minus 6x square. If you add the terms having the uh, same degree of x, you will get 28 minus 13x minus 6x square. This is how we used to do in the school, right? So I just wanted to give you an idea and we, I also wanted to evaluate these two polynomials because we are going to use it throughout the lecture, right? This example. So let's go ahead and evaluate right? this polynomial and uh, let's use the coefficient form. So let's say we have two polynomials, right? The coefficient form would look something like this. 7 comma 2 for first polynomial and 4 minus 3 for second polynomial second polynomial right these are their coefficient forms right so let's say uh, we want to multiply these two polynomials how we'll do that it is very very similar to what we did uh, in the previous slide exactly the same to be honest right so the product of these two polynomials we have already evaluated is 28 minus 3x minus 6x square right and its coefficient form we are going to evaluate here right since this is a two degree uh, polynomial there will be three coefficient that's why right now the way you will evaluate it is the same way uh, we did in the previous uh, previous slide right so we'll take the first coefficient multiply with the whole polynomial you will take the second coefficient multiply with the whole polynomial right so if you convert it in algorithm so what you are doing you are going through the first polynomial coefficient so the first polynomial is first coefficient right uh, and then for each coefficient of uh, from the first polynomial you are going through the whole poly, uh, coefficient of the second polynomial that's why the other for loop right and they are going till two because uh, there are two coefficient because both of these polynomials are of degree one right so what you are doing for each time you take seven you multiply with four and minus three right each time when you are multiplying with these two uh this is a degree zero term right seven is coefficient of x raised to the power zero that is why it is at the index zero right when you multiply uh, an uh, coefficient of degree zero with coefficient of degree one what you will get a coefficient of degree one right basically seven times minus three x so you'll get a co uh, you'll get a product and uh, a coefficient and x coefficient will be of x raised to power one Right. That's why when you are multiplying i and j, c of i, c1 of i and ct of j, when you're multiplying these two, their coefficient add up 
sorry power of uh, x actually add up and the resultant is coefficient of x raised to power i plus j that's why you are making changes in c of i plus j so this is the whole algorithm and i'll give you an idea i'll, I'll give you a walk through how it happens so take 7 7 times 4 will be 28 since both of these two are at index 0 that means coefficient of x raised to power 0 their product will be also coefficient of x raised to power 0 that's why at index 0 i have added 28 7 times uh, 4 is 28 right now 7 times minus 3 is minus 21 and this will be coefficient of x raised to power 1 that's why at index 1 you will add it minus 21 right because basically i is still 0 because we are taking 7 and j becomes 1 so 0 plus 1 is 1 that means x raised to power 1 that's why i plus j 0 plus 1 is 1 right so minus 21 now the job of 7 is done basically i equals to 0 is done i becomes 1 that means 2 2 times 4 is what uh, 2 times 4 is uh, uh, 8 of course and it will be added here at index 1 why because uh, i is 1 j is 0 i plus 1 that means sorry i plus j that is 1 plus 0 1 so x raised to power 1 that's why index 1 we are updating right now 2 minus 3 is minus 6 that will be added here so if you see if you do the maths and complete the calculation you'll get 28 minus 13 6 which is exactly what you have here so you will get the product polynomial right so as you can see this is the algorithm that we have used right and the overall time complexity if you know of this algorithm is n square so multiplication of two polynomial in coefficient form takes n square of time right let's compare the same with value form right. so let's multiply the polynomials in value form first of all in the last lecture we have established that to represent a polynomial of degree n right we need n plus one point value pair right so since these two are of degree one we only needed two uh, point value pair but here i have evaluated three why first of all we are going to multiply these two right and since both of these polynomials are of degree one their product will be of degree two right twice of the polynomial so what we are going to do throughout this uh, fft part will uh, we'll, first of all we'll consider that both of the polynomial are having the same degree if not we can append zero at the end <clears throat> and make them equal right uh, how i'll explain in later part don't worry about that first of all important thing is that We'll assume both of the polynomials have the same degree n. If you multiply two polynomials of degree n, the resultant is of degree 2n. Right? So since both of these polynomials are of degree 1, the resultant will be of degree 2. And if the resultant is of degree 2, we need 3.2 represented. Alright. That's why I have evaluated both of these on three different points. Right? Because the result, which is this one has three points sorry uh, is having two degree so we need three point to uh, basically evaluate this one right or uh, represent this one so that's why i have evaluated both of the above polynomial on three different points right now uh, first of all i have used zero one and minus one points to evaluate both of these polynomial they should be same because we are going to multiply them when you're multiplying two polynomials in value form uh, you basically multiply the corresponding pair the corresponding pair what are the corresponding pair uh, the pair which are evaluated on the same point so for example this 0 7 and 0 4 are corresponding because both of these pair are evaluated on 0 x is equals to 0 right 1 9 1 1 both of them are corresponding pairs similarly minus 1 5 and minus 1 7 these two will be uh, multiply together so when you multiply two polynomial which are given in the value form it is very very easy that is the result so first point are evaluated as zero so resultant will also be evaluated at zero and the value of first polynomial at zero was seven value of second polynomial at uh, x is equal to zero was four just multiply these two values seven times four is 28 similarly one nine one one so at one 9 times 1 that will be 9 at minus 1 5 times 7 and this is the product of the polynomial in value form so if you see it only takes linear time 
all you had to do is go through the whole pairs and just multiply their y values, right? 7 times 4, 28. 9 times 1, 9. 5 times 7, 35. Done. And this represents product polynomial, result polynomial in value form. All right. You can actually confirm it. Just put 0 here in the polynomial and you will get 28. Just put 1 here as x, you will get 9. Just put minus 1 here as x, you will get 35. And since there are three points, it basically, uh, I mean, uh, it, it since we have three points, it is uh, enough to represent, uh, represent this polynomial in value form because degree of this polynomial is 2 and we needed three points. That's why I initially evaluated both of the polynomial on three different points. It depends on the result. The result will be of degree 2. So evaluate the original polynomials on 2 plus 1, that is 3 points. Right? So as you can see, the multiplication of polynomial in value form is linear. It only takes linear time. Right? That's why it, uh, it is much better to evaluate polynomial in value form. Right? So this is how you evaluate uh, <clears throat> in coefficient and value form and you can clearly see which one is better when it comes to multiplying polynomial right value form now yeah we have already uh, yeah we have already done that my bad let's go to the next slide this now let's learn the high level idea of fft so this is the high level idea of fft we have already learned what is value form what is coefficient form how to evaluate that uh, which one is better doing what right we have all the idea now this is what fft does it actually utilizes both of the forms so you are given go, uh, you are given two polynomials a of x and b of x in coefficient form what it does it transforms both of the polynomials from coefficient form to value form because that is easier to multiply then once you have both the polynomials in value form you multiply it get the result polynomial c of x in value form because you multiply two polynomial in value form you will get the result in value form right and when you have the value form you need to transform it again to get the coefficient form so this is how fft works right to multiply two polynomials you convert them from uh, coefficient to value form from value form you multiply them you get the result and just transform it back to coefficient form and then you have the result in coefficient form right now if you see this multiplication in point form is actually linear time operation right so this step only takes linear time if we can find out a very good way uh, you know asymptotically a faster way to convert from coefficient to value form and vice versa then the whole algorithm will be very fast and that is exactly where dft and inverse dft comes in right dft that is your discrete fourier transform actually helps you convert coefficient form of polynomial into value form in n log n time similarly in inverse of discrete fourier transform helps you convert the value form back into coefficient form right so once we learn about dft inverse dft is just a little bit of modification you don't have to do a lot right so we'll only worry to learn about dft the whole idea you already have you have the structure skeleton of fft how it works all now we need to learn is how we can transform coefficient form to value form using discrete Fourier transform, right? Which only takes n log n time. So the overall algorithm will take n log n plus n plus n log n, which is asymptotically n log n time. So that's why FFT takes only n log n time. Now the important thing is what is DFT? How it actually helps us uh, helps us basically evaluate polynomial from coefficient to value form. How does it do that, right? So let me give you just a little bit of idea about DFT because it requires its, itself a, a different lecture to explain everything because it uses a lot of things because this is the most important part of FFT. If you understood this, you understand the whole FFT itself. So start with the DFT. So discrete Fourier transform, what is it? So discrete Fourier transform, what it does, it is an algorithm that, that converts a coefficient form of a polynomial to a value form. Simple or in other words dft basically evaluates the polynomial on certain points conversion from coefficient to value form 
is basically evaluating that polynomial, right? And DFT does the exact same thing. Uh, point to note here is that these certain points, what are the points? So DFT is basically evaluating your polynomial or some, on some points, but you, you need to carefully choose those points because the way you choose those points can actually uh, change the overall time complexity. If you choose those points smartly, you can reduce the time of evaluation. And that's exactly what DFT does, right? So what it does is a DFT evaluates the polynomial on exactly n uh, points, right? Well, n is a power of two. Why power of two? I'll explain that, just, just wait a little longer. And it also chooses roots of unity as points for evaluating the polynomial, right? So we don't just randomly pick any point to evaluate. For example, let's evaluate on zero, on one, on two. No, we pick the points to evaluate the polynomial smartly, which helps us reduce the overall time complexity from n squared to n log n, right? And how does it choose it? It chooses roots of unity, right? As points to evaluate. How these two points, n should be a power of two and roots of unity, we are choosing as points for evaluation, right? Why power of two? Why n have to be a power of two? What if uh, we are picking a polynomial whose, uh, whose degree is not power of two? What to do in that situation, right? I'll explain everything in the next, next lecture. Why? See, because now we are going to learn the DFT and why we are choosing roots of unity. It is the most important part of DFT, the most important part. Till now, whatever we have learned is like the 20, 25% of FFT. These two points are the basically heart of FFT. All right. So in the next lecture, we have to devote the whole lecture to understand these two and how DFT actually evaluates the polynomial in n log n time. To understand that, we have to devote a whole lecture to understand these two. All right. In the meantime, here's a homework for you. So do some research on complex number. I'm 100% sure in school you have learned about uh, uh, complex numbers, right? Just go through the, uh, the complex number again. Second thing, just go through the roots of unity. Yeah, just, just do a little bit of research. That's more than enough. All right. It will give you kind of boost when we are going to learn in the next lecture. And we are going to explore these two to understand DFT. All right. So just spend some time learning our uh, complex numbers and roots of unity. So yeah, this is all for this lecture and let's meet in the next lecture. Until that uh, time, just keep coding. Thank you.